If you are looking for the easiest way to deploy an API on RouterOS, watch our video on REST API and you will be able to monitor and control your routers with ease by exchanging simple JSON files. However, if you are looking for the fastest, most lean method possible, something you could use in large deployments to exchange data in real time, then forget about REST and get to work with our API. Now, jokes aside, this is just another way for you to create your own solutions in a way you like. Back when I started at Microtech, there was no REST API. So when I wanted to monitor and interact with our internal network, I had two options, SNMP or API. I quickly found out that exchanging data over SNMP can be extremely slow. So just reading a bunch of data from one router over SNMP could take 10 or even 20 seconds which is pretty absurd as in terms of data size, it was maybe a couple of kilobytes at most. But when I tried API, I found that the exchange was almost immediate. I could set up a simple web interface to monitor an, an internal network consisting of about 50 routers in real time. That is the power of our API. Now, the downside is that you have to be quite advanced as you will be working at a pretty low level literally exchanging bytes of data over a socket. There are some existing libraries out there if you Google around, but whether you use them or not, I hope you are, you are up for a challenge. Let's dive right in. First of all, the API closely follows the syntax of our CLI, so the command content is pretty straightforward. But first, we need to establish a connection and we also need to understand how to encode and decode our API messages. By default, there are two ports used for API. If you are in a small deployment within a secure network, you might just communicate in plain text over port 8728. But if you need to use encryption, in RouterOS, we have a service called API SSL, which by default is using port 8729. This service can establish a connection that is secured using TLS. And by the way, you can do that completely for free by creating a self-signed certificate from within RouterOS. But even if you can't be bothered to set up a certificate, this API SSL service will fall back to establishing encryption using Diffie-Hellman key exchange. Once you have a connection established, the communication takes place by sending words that form a sentence. Sounds familiar, except in our API language, you only send one command word, followed by attribute words, if any are necessary, and you terminate the sentence with an empty word. Let me explain. These are not human words we are talking about. Communication of each word starts with the length of the word that you are about to send as a value in bytes, followed by the actual content of the word. As far as I understand, that is mainly a way to ensure integrity of the exchanged messages. Now, the content of the command word can actually be an entire CLI command, at least the part that invokes action. For example, the CLI command slash IP slash address slash print would be contained in one command word, and the sentence would be terminated by sending another word essentially telling the router that there are zero bytes of data coming next. At that point, the router would send reply with a list of IP addresses. The attribute words, as you might guess, contain the properties that you could normally specify in the CLI. For example, if slash IP slash address slash add would be your command board, then you would have to follow it up with attribute words containing the address and the interface name. While the content of the command board is literally typed the same as the CLI command, each attribute word has to start with an equal sign and another equal sign has to be used to separate the property name from value. So in the case of address add, you could send something like the following two words, equals interface equals ether1 and then equals address equals 10.0.0.1. Whenever you send a command to your router, you will receive what is called a reply word. It starts with an exclamation mark followed by done if your command was accepted or trap if something went wrong. If there is more data being to return from your router, such as in the case of the print command, the reply word will be followed by attribute words. 
the print command can actually return very specific data as well. You can narrow down the results with query words, which start with a question mark and are followed by a property just like the attribute words. For example, interface print command followed by question mark name equals ether1 will only return results for ether1. That is the basics covered. If you have been wondering where have I been typing these words in, then go to our help page and under the API section, there is a subsection called Python 3 example, and it contains the code for a basic API client that can connect to a router, correctly encode the API messages, and even use encryption if you require. Feel free to use and modify that Python code as you please and have a great day.